All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have all of you here with us again. Um, if you are watching us from any uh, online too and want to join us at the Zoom meeting, uh, please do so. We can soon um, share the link to it. And today we're going to have uh, Teresa talking about the divine or natural laws. Right. Um, but before that, I'm going to do a quick reading from the book, Our Daily Bread, and then our initial prayer. 75. Complaining. Do everything without complaining or arguing. That's in Paul. That's for Paul in the Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 14. There has never been a dispute that was not perceived by inferior complaining. It is an unseen habit of frivolous people to incite ingratitude, immoral misery, pride, vanity, and all these courts that ruin souls in this world in order to organize shady conversations where goodness, love, and truth are focused with malice. When someone starts encountering simple motives for many complaints, it is important to proceed with a rigorous self-examination in order to verify if, in fact, oneself is not suffering from the terrible illness of complaining. Those who fulfill their duties with righteous activities will certainly not be able to, to have occasions for complaints. It is indispensable for the discipline to be on guard against the, these accumulators of destructive energies because in general sense, their pernicious influence invades almost all the areas of struggle of the planet. It is easy to identify them. For them, everything is erroneous, nothing is good, and you can expect nobody nothing. Their word is that, is it, their word is that of permanent irritability, their observations are unjust and disencouraging. Let us strive with everything within our power to counteract these humiliating mental attitudes. Confident in God, let us then expand our hopes and dreams completely, assured that, just as the old Proverbs assert, an optimist heart is the medical prescription for peace and happiness. Let us all close our eyes. Let's elevate our thoughts to our Master Jesus. Let him behind everything that we have been going through. So we can take these lessons of today with an open mind and an open heart. the lessons from the gospel according to spiritism, the spirit's book, and all the spiritual teachings can help us to a better understanding of God, of Jesus' gospel. We ask you, God, to bless our session. We ask all the good spirits that guide us, the guide TSS, to inspire all of us, especially Teresa, who's going to be lecturing us today. Thank you, God, and so be it. Teresa. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning, everyone. So today we are going to be talking about the divine laws. Um, and that's part of the spirit's book. Uh, if you go to part three, uh, chapter one, chapter one, that's going to be start talking about uh, the divine laws. And that's exactly what we're going to be uh, talking today. OK. So Kardec starts this, this chapter asking uh, the spirits, uh, what is the divine or natural law, right? And, Kardec, and, and the spirits bring pretty much three characteristics of what are, um, that define what's, uh, what's the divine or the natural law, right? He says that's the law of God, 
Um, it's the only law necessary for human beings to be happy. And it's eternal and immutable as God it is, right? So he makes very clear that uh, it's the laws that God created. So when he created the universe, when he created us, he created all those laws. And, um, and because it was created by God, they are eternal and immutable. And it should be the only one that we should be following. Anyways, if you want to really want to be happy, if you want to you know, acquire that uh, sensation of happiness and peace that we always want, uh, that's the only one that we need. We don't need it any other laws. Right? But if you read the Spirit's book, um, the way Kardec wrote the book or the way Kardec interacts with the Spirits, is, it's very interesting. Because if you read the book, you see that a lot of times Kardec uh, makes the same question in different ways, right? And, and to the point that sometimes this, the answer from the Spirits is, hey, Kardec, we already told you this, like how many times we need to repeat, right? And in this chapter, it's not different. So Kardec wants to make sure that he really understood uh, what are those divine laws? So even though the spirits have told him uh, right on the first question that the divine laws, uh, they're eternal and immutable as God it is, uh, Kardec still asks uh, the spirits, but does it change with time, right? So the divine laws were different 5,000 years ago than what they are now. And maybe as we evolve, are they gonna change as we evolve as well to, to, uh, to the future? And the spirits tell them again, no, <laughs> the divine laws are perfect and they're immutable. So they don't need to change. He says, now your laws, the human beings, those like the human laws, that's those that are the laws that actually change over time, right? Because they're imperfect, right? And it is true. If you look at, at our laws 500 years ago to now, they are completely different, right? And are they perfect now? No, they're not. But are they much better than they used to be? That's for sure, right? 500 years ago, you didn't be, you hear about uh, uh, workers' uh, rights, right? Workers' laws and rights, right? Um, over 200 years ago, it was okay to be uh, to have slaves. It was normal. It was even considered a divine right to have slaves. Today, we do not. Uh, this is not even not legal, but it's illegal to have slaves, that's horrible. Like we don't accept it, it is anymore. So our laws are the ones that uh, change with the time because they have to adapt to our um, advancements in intellectual, morally, as we advance more and more, our, our human laws, our civil laws will change with time and adapt to new realities and getting better slowly, but still not perfect, right? But the divine laws, they are perfect. They are perfect a billion years ago, and they're going to still be perfect a billion years from now. That's why they're immutable. Why change something that's perfect? There's nothing wrong with it. So there's no reason to change it, right? So the harmony that regulates both the moral and the material universe, is, it's founded upon laws that God has established forever. Um, so there's no need to change. Everything that exists in the universe will respond, will work according to the divine uh, uh, or natural laws, okay? So if we go back 2000 years ago, right? Or just over 2000 years ago now, the laws that, that Jesus brought to us, all the teachings that he, that he brought to us, um, they are exactly the same as we have today. There's no change. There's nothing that Jesus taught to us at the time that now it needs a little upgrade or now and it's changing. No, it's exactly the same. And that is and that's exactly why 2,000 years ago, or if you want to go even farther back as much as you want, the sentiments of pride, selfishness, vanity, greedy led us to wars, suffering, and pain. Exactly as today, 2022, pride, selfishness, uh, greedy, vanity is leading us to wars, 
suffering and pain, right? And we don't have just one war going around. Um, we have the war on Ukraine right now. We have wars in Congo. We have wars in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, so many other areas now, Syria, right? Laws that we, uh, wars that are happening there that we don't even talk about, but they're happening. And historically, the truth, I think we haven't stopped having a war. Did this planet had a moment in the last, I don't know, 500,000 years that we didn't have, at least even if it's a small civil war going on, where we killing each other and bringing what? Suffering, pain, and loss. Because that's the only thing that, that brings us. So nothing changed in terms of the, 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 the laws. And in the same way that 2,000 years ago, the people who understood all those divine laws that Jesus brought, the laws of love one another, the laws of charity, the laws of fraternity, they all had consequences. They were good. That they brought something new that was good. There was, you know, they brought us peace, that brought us happiness the same way as today. And the same way 3,000 years from now, if we're still keeping vanity, pride, selfishness inside of us, we're gonna keep creating wars, pain, suffering. Or if you bring love, charity, and the sense of fraternity, um, we're gonna keep creating peace, we're gonna keep creating happiness, we're gonna keep creating a good environment of us. Because the law is the same, is immutable, right? And why is that? It's very simple. Because we are born with a software inside of us that cannot be erased, we cannot reprogram, right? The software is called the divine laws, right? When we are born, we are born already with that software in us called divine laws. It was written in our conscious. And I'm talking about when we are born. I'm not talking about when we are born this incarnation. I'm talking about when we are born, when God created us as a spirit, when he said, okay, now I'm creating you as a new spirit, simple and ignorant, right? And you're going to start your journey as a human being spirit, okay? Um, right there, that software was put in us, right? And so basically, when we go against the divine laws, we're going against our own nature. We're going against who, who we are. Because when God put those divine laws inside of us, when he created us, like pretty simple and ignorant, the idea is that the software would be developing inside of us to trial and errors, because it would be you no know, simple and ignorant, so we wouldn't make mistakes, and, and through trial and errors would get better, and the software would just you know expand more and more inside of us, and would understand slowly more and more that we're here to love one another, that we're here to, to live as a one family. Right? The problem is that as we start to, start to develop ourselves a little bit more, instead of following this program that the software was created for, we decide to, you know, recode it and create something parallel in there and let our vanity, our selfishness to speak a little bit louder. Well, the problem is that the software doesn't work in that way and it's part of us. And like I said, you cannot reprogram the software. So then we're going against our own nature. That's why it hurts so much. And it hurt it back in there, it's gonna hurt now, and it's gonna hurt in the future. If we keep going against our own nature, because the divine laws, the laws of love and fraternity were put in inside of us when we were born, right? And that's why every time we do something wrong, the first thing to accuse us is our own conscience. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, oh, that's what a mistake. That's why sometimes it's so hard for ourselves to forgive ourselves, right? Because our conscience is telling us that what we did is wrong, right? But sometimes we insist in it and we know it's wrong, but it's still insist and we still want to do it. But then the more we insist in doing it, 
the, the more it pains, right? Because we're going against our own nature because the, the divine laws are written inside of us. God created us with, with them written inside of us for us to uh, develop them with time. So Kardec um, asked them, uh, asked the, 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 the spirits about um, if all the laws, uh, they're, they're divine. And that's what the spirit says, it says, yes, all the laws of nature are divine because God is author of all things. And, and even though the spirits in this chapter, they divide in the laws of the soul, which is the moral laws, and the laws of the matter, uh, they are still all divine. So it doesn't matter if I'm talking about the law of gravity. Is the law of gravity a divine law? Yes, it is. Because God created the universe, right? So he decided that we're going to have gravity and the laws of uh, you know, attraction. And uh, uh, he decided that the, the, the plants are going to spin and going to have the sun. And then what's the speed that the, 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 the plants are going to turn around? Everything in law. So when you're talking about the laws of physics, we are talking about divine laws. When you're talking about chemistry, we are talking about divine laws. How our body, our material body works, that's part of the divine laws. How the planets and galaxies far away from here are working and moving, it's part of the divine laws. Because God created everything. He created the universe, so that the material universe, but he also created us, he created the spirits, he created the humans, and he created the divine laws, the moral laws that should guide us. So everything in this universe, it's part of the divine laws because God created everything, right? So everything came, came from him. But for the longest time, um, we saw those two things as completely separate, right? So scientists looked at the laws of the matter, right? And then uh, the moral people or, you know, the spiritual people look at the laws of the soul, the moral laws. And for the longest time, we saw them as two completely separate things, and which is understandable because for so long, we had the law, the moral laws or the laws, the teachings that Jesus brought to us manipulated in a, in a certain way the science made science completely wanted to stay apart from it, right? As if they're two completely thing, different things. And if you're a scientist, you could not believe in God. You could not be, you could not be a spiritual person because I cannot prove that. So it, it, this is an absurd. So we always try to see, we saw them as two complete separate things and they are not. Yes, you do have those two different categories, but they are part of the same thing. They are part of the same plan, just two different things. That's why uh, uh, the spirits tell us that we, we created single and ignorant, but we're here to progress morally and intellectually, right? Which is part of those two groups, the moral laws and the laws of matter, right? And now we start to see more and more, actually they finally coming together right? More and more we have to, we see scientists saying, yes, I am a scientist, but also I have my religion and I do believe in God. We have more and more scientists doing that. We have had more and more scientists starting to look into uh, trying to figure out to prove that the soul exists, that the soul exists after death. Kardec, 19th century, a scientist started to decide to go and study the mediumistic groups and start to do a scientific approach to it to figure out that, oh yes, there is, there is a spirit after we die, who are they? And he wanted to know who are just those spirits that are talking to us, right? And then helped it to bring us all this knowledge that it's so important. So we see slowly those two laws, those two categories starting to come more and more together as they should, because they're part of the same, they are part of the whole, um, uh, creation, right? And then Kardec asks a question to, to the spirit. He says, but can we master both? 
can I know everything about the law of the moral laws and can I know everything about the laws of matter, right? Can I master both of them? And the spirit says, yes, you can, but you cannot do that just in one existence. You're gonna need many, many existence to do that. And they say, look, for example, how many thousands of years took us to go from primitive man, like the cave man, to the civilized man that we are today? And I know this is a bit hard to believe that we civilized, but trust me, we are. <laughs> and we have progressed quite, quite a lot. Uh, even though the news these days doesn't look like. But yes, we did progress, we're much better. Look at that. How many thousands of years took, and, and imagine how many reincarnations took us to go from the knowledge of the caveman to the knowledge that we are here today. And if you take it in consideration that uh, the spirit tells Kardec that uh, today, the moral and intellectual evolution that we have today, we're still way closer to the caveman than we're close to a pure spirit, which is Jesus, because that's what it is. Here, when they ask, can we master both of them? He says, can we become a pure spirit? And if we imagine how many more reincarnations we have to go through until we can master both the law, both laws, right? The laws, the moral laws and the laws of man. So it's a long journey, right? But yes, we all going to get there. We all can and we all going to get there. We all going to become a, a pure spirit, right? Um, we all like, like Jesus. Jesus looks to this plan. He understands completely he understands all the laws of the matter. He understands all of the moral laws, right? right? There's doubt about him how it works. Meanwhile, in our science today, uh, in physics, a lot of things is still theories. Right? To Jesus, there's no theories anymore of how things work in terms of the laws of the matter. But in our, in our scientific world here still, we, we, as much as we have learned, a lot of things that we have are not laws in, yet because we cannot fully prove them. So they are theories, amazing theories that are really helping us to progress but they're only theories. And there's so much more in science that we have to learn, right? But we cannot do that in just one existence. And that's why we have the multiple reincarnations that allow us to slowly reach this level of a, uh, of a pure spirit where we are gonna master the laws of the soul and the laws of matter, right? And then remember how Kardec, I said Kardec is insistent. <laughs> he asked the same question in a different way because the spirits have been telling him, yes, it's immutable, it's eternal. So which means if it's immutable, eternal, no matter where you are in this planet or in this universe, they are the same. But Kardec insists, he says, but is the divine laws the same for all the worlds, right? Because we know that we're not the only planet that's uh, uh, inhabited, right? There's there's other planets with people living on it. Some of them are advanced, some are less advanced. So Kardec wants to know, but are the laws the same in every single world, in, every, in different planets, right? And that's the answer from the from the, the spirits. They see reason tell us that they must be appropriate for the nature of each world and proportional to the degree of advancement of the beings that inhabit them, right? So what is they're trying to say is like, the laws are the same. There's no change. However, depending on the advancement of the people on that world, uh, the laws will be presented in a different way, right? It will be adapted to what the people and then in that point can absorb. So, for example, but that doesn't change the law. So for example, let's talk about laws of matter. So let's talk about the laws of gravity. So these days we understand laws of gravity. That's why it's called a law of gravity because it's 100% proved and we know exactly how the law of gravity works, right? Uh, that's why in, 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 in science we call law of gravity. But if you go a thousand years ago, grab a time machine, go a thousand years ago, and try to talk about the laws of gravity to someone a thousand years ago. 
You're going to say what? I love what? You're not going to understand anything, right? And they're probably going to think you're crazy and not even going to talk to you. And thousand years ago, but if a thousand years ago you were a woman talking about this, they're gonna say you're a witch and they're gonna burn you. You're crazy witch and they're gonna burn you to ashes, right? But did it change how the law of gravity were at the time? Just because did, people didn't know and could not understand the laws of gravity, did it change the laws of gravity? No, the gravity worked exactly in the same way, right? But at that time, we not even, even talk about it because people could not even grasp it at the time. Then finally, we're able to understand laws of gravity. Now we can talk about laws of gravity. And in three, 5,000 years from now, there's things that today we could not understand, but because we have grown um, morally and intellectually, that we are gonna be able to talk about it because now we're gonna be able to grasp and understand. But the law itself doesn't change. The law is the same. It's just the way it's presented, the way it's uh, um, studied is different. Same thing. Let's talk about our laws of the soul. Um, we are here on this planet of expiation, almost becoming a planet of regeneration. And all the time, if you read the books that Kardec brought to us, if you bring all, if you bring, uh, read all the books that... Uh, uh, Chico Xavier, Givaldo Frank brought to us. If you read them, they're all talking about, they're all teaching us how to be less selfish, how to be less proud. They're all talking about this, you know, about selfishness, pride, how this hurts us, how this leads to us. Do you think that in a happy planet, they need to have those books? That they need to study how to be less selfish, <laughs> how to not be vain, how to not be greed. They don't need these books anymore. It's because the law for them is different. No, the law, the divine law is exactly the same as it is here. It's exactly the same there. It's exactly the same thing in, in, a, in a primitive world. But the way they're applied, the way they are presented is what's different, right? But the law is immutable and eternal. Same thing. If you go back to the cavemen who had to kill fellow beings to survive, uh, the consequence of it will be completely different when we, we today kill our fellow beings, our brothers and sisters, the consequence is completely different because now we have a knowledge that the cavemen didn't have it. That makes right for him to kill the fellow being back in there? No, it's still against God's law. The law is only one, it's immutable. But the consequences are completely different because there he was, he was completely ignorant and he was trying to survive. Today, we do out of a greedy. We do out of vanity, pride and selfishness. So the consequences inside the divine law are completely different, right? So that's what it changed, but the divine laws are exactly the same. What was wrong five billion years ago, it's wrong now and it's gonna be wrong in five billions of years from here. So it doesn't change, but the way it's presented, depending on the moral evolution of each planet uh, and in the way that the people deal with that law, it is completely, it, it's what changes, but not the law itself. Okay. And then Kardec makes a question to uh, to the to the spirits and says, okay, but you know how we, we always talk about in the spirit is that when we're in the spiritual plan, we have a broader view of what it's happening, right? Of when we're, when we're in the spiritual plan, we cannot even anymore. Uh, deny that a reincarnation exists because now we, we know it's like, okay, I died and I realized that I still exist. And then eventually someone's going to say, hey, it's time to reincarnate. And then we have to reincarnate. So we, we have a more broader view of what's happening, right? And then we come here, we forget everything. And, and but Kardec wants to know because of this difference, if when we're in the spiritual plan, we understand better the laws of soul. So if we uh, if our degree of perfection 
when in the spiritual plan, uh, it's higher than we hear or incarnated. So basically what he thought was like, oh, when a spiritual plan, because a spiritual plan, I can see more. Um, I'm, I'm, I have a better moral perfection or I'm, I'm, I'm morally a bit more involved. And then when I reincarnate and I do all those mistakes when I'm here, is you know, my moral evolution kind of goes down a little bit because I forget everything, right? And, and the spirit says, no, the degree of uh, perfection, moral perfection, it's part of who we are. There's nothing to do with being on the spiritual plane or being, or, or being incarnated or not, incarnated or discarnated, right? Uh, because our level of moral evolution, it's ours, is our essence. So whatever level of moral evolution that I discarnate is what I'm going to bring to the spiritual plan. And whatever level of moral evolution that I have in the spiritual plan is what I'm going to bring with me when I reincarnate, right? So... What we need to understand as well is that we're continuously growing on both plans because a lot of times we have the impression that because we always hear in the spiritual plan, uh, in spiritism, we always hear that, oh, we need you to reincarnate so we uh, can come here because it's here that we're going to expiate and going to try some expiation and, and grow morally. Um, so sometimes people can have this impression that I have an, uh, an, um, I have an incarnation and then I discarnate. Then I go to the spiritual plan, it goes, oh, look at this, all those things that you need to fix. So then I'm staying there waiting for another incarnation so I can come and start fixing it, you know, everything. And it's not our happening. When we discarnate and go to the spiritual plan, we continue this process of more evolution. The, the process of grow, growing morally is continuous. We do here, we do in the, in the spiritual plan, then we prepare ourselves, come back here again, go to the trials and expiations, go back again. So they're working together, right? And having uh, and a good example of this, it's uh, André Luis himself. André Luis brought us all the books, including our solar. Um, he discarnates, finds himself in, for years in the, in the umbrau, right? And then finally he's rescued, goes to North Solar. And if you read the book, how much growth, moral, moral growth he had while he was in the spiritual plan, because he really realized what he did and, and he was very curious and he wanted to learn more. He wanted to learn more all those uh, moral laws and he does a whole, not just studying, but he starts working as well in the spiritual plan to the point that he now, evolved so much in the spiritual plan that he was allowed to write the books to us, right? To the mediumship of uh, um, Chico Xavier and bring us all those teachings, right? So he didn't need to wait for a new incarnation to be able to grow. He was right doing in the spiritual plan. And that's what we all can do, right? And whatever we acquire in the spiritual plan, we're going to bring with us, right? And same thing, whatever we acquire here, we bring it back. And we keep adding a little bit each time we're there, each time we're here. And we, and we keep progressing. Now, what the spirits say that sometimes could happen is, let's say if I, if I land a life here incarnated, just led by selfishness, pride, vanity, and now I discarnate. And not all the spirits are allowed to stay a long time in the spiritual plan. Okay, but no matter how time I stay in the spiritual plan, now I have to come back and I have to um, start again. Now I'm going to have to fix everything that I, that I tried to, that, you know, that I didn't do right. I have to start to re-educate myself and all the process of uh, repairing, right? Well, while I'm in the spiritual plan, I get all those good counseling. I get all those good, you know, I go to watch classes and, you know, and then I know what I have to do. I know what I have to change, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that I changed who I am or my essence. Because the same thing for us here incarnated. Just because I read the spirit's book, just because I study, just because I prepare lectures, just because, you know, I know all the theory, it doesn't, doesn't mean that I change my essence, who I am. It doesn't mean that I, I'm, more, I'm now more involved just because I study and I learned all those things, right? 
is by practicing that will really change who, who you are. Same thing on the spiritual plan. Just because I was in contact with my mentor spirit and I got all those good advices and I'm coming, that doesn't, doesn't necessarily change who I am, right? So what they say is that some of those spirits, they get all those good counseling and advices and they're ready to go and they come and what happened? They forget. They forget all this because they allowed for all the the their um, bad vices that they had around uh, uh, inside them to speak louder. And they will forget all those good advices that they, they would bring with the, them in, in, um, as an intuition. And when we think about that, I was when I was doing the, the lecture, I was reading this, the spirits were talking about that. And it just came to my mind on how important is the role of everybody who surrounds the children around. Of course, mainly mother and father, but it's actually all of us, mother and father, grandparents, uncle, aunts. If you're the friend of the family who's always around the children, it doesn't matter. Because if we, since, you know, since they're born, we give them, not only just by talking, but mostly by example, by the way we live our lives around them, bring them the sense of the moral laws, of love, of ch ch uh, charity, of fraternity, of re being respectful to one another, how much would, would we help those spirits to remember all those good advices and everything that was given to them before they, they reincarnated? Would be helping them to remember, so no matter how much, the luggage comes full of bad, bad vices would help them so much to grow and change, right? And remember all the good advice that they had before they reincarnated. So important it is our um, role around our children, right? Uh, and all of us, right? That's why they say that in the, in the more evolved planets, the children, they belong to the whole community. The whole community is responsible for raising them inside of the moral laws, right? It's not just the mother and the father responsibility to educate them. Everybody as a community educated the, the, the children, right? And so let's let's think about it because this, this is very important, right? Because we're here to help each other to grow morally. We're here to help each other to learn more and more those laws of the souls, the, the moral laws, right? And the more we help each other, the easier it's gonna be for us to finally internalize them and make them be part of who we are, right? Help that software to develop a little bit more inside of, inside of us, okay? Um, and, and again, the same moral laws and the same matter, the laws of matter that control our incarnated side are the same ones that control the spiritual side, right? As well, but the spiritual side, there's laws of the matter, yes. The physics also apply on the, on the spiritual world, right? Because matter, our spirit is matter, so yes. So the same laws of the physics that applies here applies on the spiritual world, okay? Um, so the laws, they are immutable and they work in every universe, exactly the same, okay? Ooh, sorry. So remember what I said in the beginning that uh, the spirit said that the divine laws are written in, in our conscious. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So if when God created us there as a spirit, simple and ignorant, he put this little software inside of us called divine laws and was written already in our conscience. Why the divine laws had to be revealed to us and, and still needs to be revealed to us until this day, right? Because if it was already inside of us, it wasn't just a matter of uh, we come here, you know, trials, Try and error, and then you learn, and then you know it's slowly you develop this, you know this, this conscious of the divine laws, and then we just automatically, the, uh, uh, we automatically uh, make the software, make those divine laws to be part of who we are, 
right? Why have it to be revealed to us and still needs it? And the Spirit doesn't respond in a very simple way because we have forgotten and disregarded them, right? So, but God wants us to remember them. So he always sends someone to remember, like, hey, the path, it's here, right? So that's the case of the many prophets, philosophers, missionary spirits, Kardec himself, right? And so many other that came to remind us of the divine laws, right? But then, of course, who was the biggest prophet that we had that came to remind us the divine laws? Jesus himself, right? And this is actually one of the questions that uh, uh, Kardec does to this priest. And has God, been, has God sent us uh, a perfect model and guide to humankind to follow? And the answer for them is very short. Say yes, Jesus Christ. Simple answer. Right? So before Jesus came, how many philosophers, prophets? If you look to Socrates, came like hundreds of years before Jesus. Socrates already talking about reincarnation. Socrates already talking about uh, uh, the concept that it, the true life was the spiritual life, not the material life, right? He read about all those things way back in there, right? And in fact, in, the Spirit says that in all eras, in all ages, God always sent someone to remind us of the divine laws in a format that was appropriated to that time, but he always sent someone in all eras to remind us, hey, you know that software that you have inside there? Yeah, I better start using it in the proper way, right? I always had someone to remind us and to guide us, okay? But... If even after Jesus came, like Jesus himself came, and you know, the governor of this planet to teach us, to, to, to give us everything, like if it's the perfect model, like if I already have the perfect model, why do I need anything after him, right? And the spirit says for two reasons. One's obvious, because you're still forgetting. So you still need someone to come and it reminds, hey, this is the path. Do you want to stop hurting? Do you want to stop your wars? Do you want to start the pain? This is the path. But of course, because there was another reason, was because Jesus' teachings were frequently, frequently allegorical and in the form of parables, because he spoke according to his times, time and place. But today, the truth must be made intelligible for all. So... Why we had Kardec? Did you need Kardec? Well, Jesus already brought everything. We, we should know everything. Well, Kardec came to give us that key that unlocks a lot of those parables, a lot of those allegorical images that Jesus brought today at the time that are a little bit confusing. And, 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 it's, and it's not a coincidence that in, in the gospel according to the spiritists, there is one chapter that's called Strange Morals strange moral. And he talks about exactly some of those passages of the gospel that are really weird because uh, when Jesus says, um, forsake mother and father, it's like, what do you mean? If, if the divine law says, honor mother and father, and then now Jesus comes and saying, forsake them, that makes no sense. But then Kardec brings the key and saying, no, this is the, the, he's not telling for you to disrespect or to not honor your mother and father. What he's trying to bring here to us is that the concepts of a universal family, right? He's trying to add a layer saying that we are all here part of one family. We need to respect all of us, right? Is in no moment he says to do, do not honor your mother and father. But if Kardec hadn't brought to us this key, and most important, if Kardec hasn't brought us the key of reincarnation, a lot of things of the divine laws would be very difficult to, to understand, would be very difficult to see them in an irrational way, would be very difficult for us to understand this supreme justice from God, right? So that's why we had people, um, we had other missionaries coming after Jesus uh, to help us. And many more will be coming, right? 
because we still need people to remind us. And even after Kardec came, brought all this knowledge, we still, even as a spiritist, we still people need to come and missionaries to come and remind us to um, how to do it, how to progress, remind us of the laws of love and charity, right? And when we think about all those missionaries, all those spirits that came along the thousands and thousands of years, including Jesus himself, they came to help us. It shows us the magnitude, magnitude of God's mercy. Um, because imagine that how much we progressed in the last, let's say, 3,000 years, right? When put the philosophers, Old Testament, the prophets, and then Jesus came. Look how much it took us to, um, to progress in that, that, that time, like just over 2,000 years, 3,000 years. And look where we are today and look how, what's happening with our world right now, right? We're still having wars. We still have people dying of hunger in this planet. Millions of people starving to death in this planet. Um, while millions of people just throw food in the garbage, right? So look how our planet is right now. It's much better than it was. Yes, we're progressing. I'm not talking about this in a way for us to see in a negative way. But imagine if we're left alone to progress. We've never had God had any of those prophets to remind us. If none of those missionary spirits have come as to inspire us and to remind us of the divine laws. If Jesus, most of all, if Jesus himself hadn't come himself to not only say, but also to leave, he lived the divine laws. How far away would it be? we would be? morally, probably intellectually as well. So what took us 2,000, 3,000 years to progress, I cannot even calculate. Maybe it would take us, what, 10,000 years to progress instead of a two or 3,000 because we wouldn't have this help. So look at the mercy of God because you would say, okay, hey, I created you simple nigger and I already put the software inside of you. I put the divine laws inside of you. You go. No, you develop on your own. And he didn't. Out of his immense mercy and love for us, he always brought us someone to remind us. And he's still bringing people, uh, spirits to remind us, right? Because he doesn't give up. He could say, oh, you know what? I read son. I sent I sent Jesus already. You guys didn't learn anything. Now you're on your own. He doesn't. He's still sending. And he's still coming. And, you know, Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel reincarnated. Joanna Jean is already announced that she's going to reincarnate. And so many highly evolved spirits are reincarnating now to help us, to remind us of this divine loss, to help us to progress a little bit faster, right? So that's so merciful uh, from God to do that. But what I want us to remember as well because it's very easy for us to think about like, oh, Jesus came to help us, the prophets, or even the, the, the missionaries, missionary spirits that came with major humanitarian movements, um, like Chico Xavier, Mother Teresa, um, Gandhi, and so many other ones, right, that we can talk about. But how about the people that are put on our daily lives to remind us of, you know, of the laws of love and charity. You know, that the, the co-work that we all have, we all have that one co-work who's always smiling, always has a good thing to say, they're always positive, they're always, you know, respectful towards the others, who always um, help to give a, a, a hand to someone in need, or that person in the family who also, you know, always positive, that person that every time you have a problem or you have like a moral dilemma, you go to them because they always have something positive to say. They treat everybody uh, around them with the love, with the care. Aren't those small missionary spirits put it around us? 
every day in our lives to teach us to remember the divine laws, to remember to help one another, to be a bit more positive. Because it's very easy for us to think about the people out there, but let's maybe be a bit more aware of the people that we take for granted, that's put in our daily lives to remind us of the divine laws, to remind us the laws of love one another, to remind us to be a little bit more respectful to each other, to remind us to be uh, a little bit more charitable, uh, a little bit more fraternal with the ones around us. We all have those people around us, right? That God puts around us, not randomly. It's not a coincidence. It's a divine intervention to help us to grow and become uh, better, to understand better his laws, to remember, right? To remember then who we are, to remember that those divine laws are already inside of us and to remind us that that is actually our essence. That's what we're created for, right? Um, so what I want us for today is to just to remember that the divine laws are part of who we are, that they are part of our essence, and it's up to us with the help of the incarnate and discarnated spirits around us to develop them and let them flourish in our hearts and minds. Because only, only in this way, we're going to reach the true happiness. And that's everything I had to bring today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank everyone <clears throat> for being with us. Um, let's open for questions. I see Leo, Sandra, Joe there. Uh, and if anyone in the internet has any questions and want to share, uh, please go ahead and we're going to read up your question here. Does anyone have any comments? Just say thank you, Teresa. That's all. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Teresa. Thank you so much, Marcio, and everybody else. Well, you know, it's it's uh, interesting that you brought those um, missionaries uh, that comes to remind us who we truly are. Who are we? Because we have those uh, beautiful laws in us, but we kind of forget them because all the the things that we haven't uh, acquired yet. So it's easier for us to, when we come here into this world, to kind of uh, go into the easy path instead of working on the things that we need to work to get ourselves uh, in the path of light, the ones that brings us closer to God, the ones that give us peace, harmony, and the love that we aspire in everything. Uh, the fulfillment that we sometimes think that is a piece of gold, a piece of uh, material things, and the true, beautiful piece of harmony that we can conquer is when we really uh, go beyond our own limits and we try to, to do better, you know, and, and, and life is here to teach us. And things happen for a reason. And the, the way they happen is for us to wake up and say, okay, what am I doing today? You know, where do I need to grow here? Why do I still go into the same um, path that is not bringing me that harmony that I need? So when you see those missionaries, you see that they bring with them not only the knowledge, but especially that peace of mind, that harmony, that loving way of being that uh, we kind of forget because we believe that those are the things that we con conquer here, the material things. So it's, um, and it's not. So it, it's, it's just when I'm close to Givaldo Franco, when I hear, uh, about Mother Teresa, Chico Xavier, and so many others that came here. Jesus is be even beyond me. But I see, but 
even though all of those people, when I look at them, when I'm close to them, I feel this, this is what I'm going to be one day. And that's what I aspire to be one day, to conquer this beautiful way of being. So that's my two cents. Thank you so much, Theresa. Thanks, Anna. Great, great lecture today. Thank you. I also love what you said about, you know, we need, need to keep coming other people to, and like Kardec that was unlock a few teachings. I think the, the change in the culture, the change in the language, you know, the way that we speak, it's so necessary because it, we compare just a few generations there. We're living together. A grandfather with a... Um, a grandchild, how different they are, how different the way that they talk and, and they think, right? Um, it's impressive. And, and one thing that also makes me think about when you said that we need to, to, um, to live what we are learning on the spiritism and any other religion, right? Um, I notice how much the new kids, they, they come with the teachings inside them and they act much more than, you know, I feel that sometimes I'm talking, talking, talk about things and then I come a teenager and they just do everything that I'm talking about. I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm this new generation, they are much more prepared with this life than I am, you know? So I'm very impressed and with a lot of hope that these new generations that are coming will truly transform. So next time that I'm here incarnated, I'm gonna get a much better word that I am leaving. I'm leaving for them. So yeah. Thank you, Teresa. No problem. So true, right? We have now these new generations we we see here. We see now kids who are seven, eight, nine years old doing campaigns to bring water in Africa. Um, that's okay that in my time, because when I was a child, we didn't have this global uh, information that the children have today. But it doesn't matter if you have the global information, if you don't have that desire to help, it's not gonna happen. And it's true, I see like kids, like kids creating foundations and the parents, and of course they have the parents who say, hey, you wanna do it, let's do it. Because how many parents also, if the kids says, oh, I wanna do something, oh, I, that's too much, you cannot do it. No, and the parents support and the, and the children like co-camping is like taking like, like being able to make like thousands of dollars to help someone that don't even know, right? But for them, it's make a difference. Those are the new spirits that are coming, again, to remind us, right? And I think when it comes from a child doing, it makes us to really think to us like, oh, if a child can do it, like what I'm doing, right? Uh, it's almost put a bit more responsibility on us, but it's, it is, it's those new spirits coming. And we know if we read uh, the whole trilogy from, um, Planetary transition from devolver, and then the last book that came as well, which is kind of a continuation, is talking about that the amount of more evolved spirits and way more evolved that they come from different planets coming here to really bring us this knowledge and help us now to boost, especially in this transition time. It's not it's not just a few spirits coming anymore. It's a lot of them coming, and they're going to reincarnate in many different areas of this planet. And those are those children that's coming and say, that's how we should do. Remind us again. Remind what we already know. No. Reminding everything. There, every single time I get to the spiritual plans, like, oh, got it. And then we come back here, like, no, I didn't get it. <laughs> and then got it. And, and they're here to remind, remind us, as right? And slowly we get, we get better. We're going to get there. Uh, do I have uh, 30 seconds for a call? Yes. Um, yeah, I, when, I, when you were talking, I was thinking about uh, who am I, right? Who, who we are, or how I, I strongly understand or believe that part of uh, us, it's part of our environment, mm -hmm. right? It's like a, we are we are result of the of the environment mm -hmm. we 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 are present as well, or at least of share mm -hmm. of who we are. Um, and and would be much more difficult for us to to be to to be shareable or to share or to do anything in ukraine now maybe 
or in a very different environment or if it, it's there are so many ways for you to be charitable in Ukraine right now, but also so much pain that it's so much difficult for you to be as well. So it's like there are both ways, right? Um, and when Master start talking about kids, actually kids around us help us to change this environment, to open our eyes for us to mimic them to do better, right? So I, I think it makes total sense what you're saying because the more more good spirits are not around us, gonna create these inside us or gonna change our kids to be more uh, closer to the laws than what I am now. Yeah, so true. And you have to remember that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, that's so true. Yes, and uh, and remind me that we can uh, even only talking about I was talking about the people in Ukraine right now cannot really practice the laws of love and charity. We all can practice the laws of charity. Yeah, uh, it's just in a different way, right? We have people now in Ukraine who are helping to shelter each other from the bombs. That's the law of love and charity, right? Uh, or uh, Mars and I involved in some uh, projects in Africa. We see children who share a single plate of food that they're gonna have for the day, but they share, right? Yes, they can. It's a completely different uh, type of charity, but we all can do it. We all can extend it, right? Uh, but it's up to us to understand that we're one big family, and that we're all here to help each other. We are living in times right now that's very difficult. Then more than ever, we need to understand that we are one big family, and that we really need to help each other if, if, through prayers, to good vibration, to whatever we can do, even if it's just a prayer. But we need now, we more than ever, we need to unite. And all of us that uh, have this knowledge, all of us who have this uh, understanding of what's happening on this planet, more than ever, we need to unite and we need to help each other, even if it's just a single prayer every day to bring more positive energy to this to this planet. The governors of this uh, uh Head of states of the, 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 the you know, who people in power now more than ever need our prayers so they can be guided by those laws of love and charity and not guided by the laws of greedy and pride. So let's keep sending out our good vibration. And if you can do something more than that, let's do it because we really need it right now, right? That's the moment for us to apply more than ever those divine laws of love and charity, right? Exactly. Thank you, Teresa. Thank everybody for participating. Uh, Sandra, do you mind if I ask you to do the final prayer for us? With happiness. Thank you. So let's all close our eyes and connect to this beautiful energy that surrounds us right now. The energy of Jesus and God's laws that beautiful energy that sometimes, well, most times we forget that it exists in us. 
That's why it's so good to feel it, to sense it, to be around it. And in this past hour, we were all together with them because when we connect with this beautiful laws of love, laws of God, we are within him. So we thank all the spirits present here today, the incarnated, discarnate ones. We thank God for this, his creation, us. We thank Jesus for all the teachings he came here to remind us what we are made of. And we thank everyone that is involved in our lives far or close. We ask God to give us a week of peace and harmony and may we see his laws during this whole week and may we get here again next week. So be it. So be it. Yeah. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Teresa. Thank everyone for joining us. Hope to see you again next Sunday when you know our activities throughout the week. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.